Good afternoon, teachers and students. Please hang tight. We're going to get started here in a few more minutes. Please hang tight. Thank you so much for being here. Hello everyone, I'm Congresswoman Deb Holland, and I'm honored to share a few words during this year's Discovery Festival. The sixth annual Discovery Festival hosted by Big Brothers Big Sisters has become a wonderful tradition, providing a wide array of opportunities for New Mexico students to discover the future of STEM. New Mexico is home to many historic and consequential scientific breakthroughs, Discoveries that range from revolutionizing the way we'll power the cities of the future to expanding our ability to explore the cosmos. This year, for the first time, Big Brothers Big Sisters of Central New Mexico is hosting Discovery Fest virtually. I'm amazed at how many events and presentations this team has put together under such challenges this year, and I'm delighted to see that a record number of New Mexico students will join the fun and the learning of Discovery Fest. New Mexico is an amazing home for technology and our kids are in a great position to learn more and take advantage of our state's unique and important role in the national tech space. In Congress, I support expanding STEM. Opportunities like Discovery Fest and fighting for resources for your incredible teachers because I know how important science, technology, engineering, and math will be for our future. I want to let you all know about my annual Congressional App Challenge that invites students to come up with one-of-a-kind apps and have their app displayed at the national level. Students learn to code, manage a project, and learn more about technology. In that spirit, I'm thrilled to welcome this future generation of innovators, inventors, and explorers, and all the incredible teachers developing these bright young minds to this year's event. Our beautiful state of New Mexico, America, and frankly, our whole world's future will be counting on the creativity 
and innovative spirit of you young people. So I want to encourage all the future physicists, researchers, biologists, and engineers watching right now to keep reaching for the stars. Learn all you can, and most of all, have fun at this year's Discovery Fest. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Congresswoman uh, Deb Holland. Uh, we really appreciate your message of support. My name is Will Toppy, and I'm the Advancement Coordinator for Big Brothers Big Sisters of Central New Mexico. And I would like to welcome you as well to this year's sixth annual Discovery Festival. So I'm going to talk real quick about what Discovery Festival was and then what it is, of course, during 2020. So uh, real quick, Discovery Festival normally is a one day event held at the Albuquerque Convention Center. We have about 3000 students all descend on the Convention Center for one day of in person hands on steam exhibitions from about 50 plus exhibitors. It's amazing. So of course, STEAM, as we all know, stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Art, and Mathematics. And again, it's this amazing hands-on exhibition, and the exhibitors get a lot out of it, the, the kids get a lot out of it, the students, and it's a total blast all the way around. However, this year, as we all know, due to the novel COVID-19 pandemic, we were unable to host this event in person as we have had in the past. But we moved all those uh, all those presentations and all that excitement totally online for not just one day in November, but for just about the entire month of November. We started this all the way back on November the 2nd, if you can believe that. It's been a wild ride. And we're very happy to say that we have nearly 5,000 students registered from all across New Mexico. So if you're a class of one of those 5,000, um, welcome, welcome to the stream. We're so happy that you're here. Uh, now, of course, uh, if you want to visit our schedule and take a look at the rest of the events, the calendar of events for the rest of the year, please check out our website. We're going to post this inside the YouTube chat, discoveryfestnm.org. I'm sure you've already been there. But at that website, you can find all of our previous recordings to this point. So you can find um, all the exhibits that maybe you missed or you want to recap. Uh, we see a lot of our students and teachers are taking advantage of that. That's awesome to see. And of course, you can see the schedule for future live streams there at that website as well. Uh, so we're very, very excited about that. Um, I want to also, as I always do, give a shout out um, to some of our sponsors for this event. You know, with, without these sponsors, what you're seeing and what you're engaging with on this Wednesday during lockdown in New Mexico, what you're seeing would not be possible without these wonderful folks. So a big shout out to our sponsors and our community partners, Honeywell, uh, Honeywell, of course, wrapped up uh, their exhibits uh, yesterday. And don't worry, though, if you missed it, you can still view it by visiting that website I mentioned earlier, discoveryfestnm.org. So be sure to check that out. Thank you so much, Honeywell, for your Da Vinci presenting sponsorship. And if it moves, there we go, uh, to our Curie sponsor, Fidelity Investments. Fidelity also presented last week, and uh, they talked about why we should save and what is credit some very important things, uh, you know, that even as an adult helped me out quite a bit. So thank you so much, Fidelity. And of course, they are our Curie sponsor for this event. And they're a hit year to year at the festival. And we're glad that they joined us again for 2020. Thank you so much, Fidelity Investments. To our ride sponsors, Aztec Machine and Repair, based out of beautiful Bloomfield, New Mexico. To Air Force Research Laboratories, they were on yesterday, talked about satellites, AFRL. It was amazing. It was an awesome, awesome presentation. Uh, I know that we got a lot of hits on that, so please take a look at that if you haven't, but thank you so much, Aztec and AFRL, for your partnership. To our Newton sponsors, the Defense Threat Reduction Agency, or DITRA, as we like to call them, they're coming on tomorrow. So if you're in middle school, uh, this, this presentation is especially geared for our middle schoolers, so please check it out, middle school. Uh, to Kirtland Air Force Base, to Micronet Solutions, Sandia National Laboratories, and Presbyterian Hospitals. To all our heroes at Presbyterian, thank you so much. Okay, and a couple of ground rules as we get started here on the YouTube as well. Uh, if anything happens, I don't think it will. We haven't had any problems so far this year, fingers crossed. But if anything happens that the live stream goes down or whatever the case is, YouTube has an outage, whatever, right? Go right back here to the same YouTube uh, channel that you are on now. That's, of course, the BBBS CNM YouTube page, Big Brothers, Big Sisters of Central New Mexico. Go right back there, and we'll have this stream back up shortly. I don't think anything's going to happen, but you never know. Also, please be sure to use the chat function. Teachers, we're counting on you. 
So teachers, if you're broadcasting this live stream inside of your Google Classroom uh, and your kids are asking questions inside your Google Classroom, please send those questions to us here inside the YouTube chat. Let us know which student's asking the question and I'll, I, we will answer them live on the stream at the very end. It should be a blast. We hope to keep it engaging for the kids in that way. So please teachers, we're relying on you for that piece. Woo! Without further ado, I'm babbling away too much. As always, I wanna introduce our guest for this afternoon. We have Tara Golba, who is a recruiter for the Barrett Honors College at Arizona State University. Tara, how are you? Fine, thank you, Will. Awesome, welcome to the stream. I always babble for way too much, so I'm just gonna pass it over to you and I'll, I'll see you at the end, okay? Great, sounds good. I'm just right. going to get my screen up here. Okay. Thank you so much for being here, everyone, and welcome to our talk. Today, we will be talking about project-based engineering and the Barrett Honors Experience at Arizona State University. So that's a mouthful, but what that means is that if you are interested in studying engineering and would also like to be in the Honors College at ASU, this is a great fit. And we are going to, to talk about how that works and why it's such a great advantage to be in the Honors College if you are an engineer. And so we hope that you will get a lot out of this talk today. Also, there will be a few sessions coming up as part of the Discovery Festival where the Ira A. Fulton Schools of Engineering at ASU will be presenting. So we hope you can check out those presentations as well. As Will mentioned, my name is Tara Golba and I'm a recruiter for Barrett the Honors College at ASU. You have my contact information here and we will be able to take some questions at the end. Um, but if we don't get to everyone's questions today, you know, feel free to reach out. We'll have contact information up again at the end. Um, and we'd love to, to talk to you if you do have questions after today's presentation. So the plan is to, to tell you more about Barrett, to talk about how it's a great fit for engineers. And we're going to briefly explain the honors curriculum. Today, we will also be hearing from Dr. Tom Sugar, who's the Associate Dean of Barrett on the Polytechnic campus at ASU. And we'll hear from an engineering student in Barrett. So you'll get a lot of perspectives, um, hopefully you'll get a lot of good information. And again, if you'd just like to, to hang on to your questions, we will have a few minutes at the end and we'll, we'll answer as many as possible. So this is a map of where the four main ASU campuses are located all around the, the Phoenix area. Uh, we've got West, Downtown, Tempe, and Polytechnic. So Barrett the Honors College is located on all four ASU campuses, and we are open to students in every major. How this works is that you live on the campus where your major is located. And Barrett is a residential community, so students live on campus for the first two years and have the option of staying in the third and fourth year. And this is really great because you're with a community of scholars, you're living with other students who are, are working hard and wanna do well, but who are also really involved in life at ASU and in Barrett. So it's just a, a great group of people to be around and you have a lot of wonderful experiences. Now, when we're talking about the Ira A. Fulton Schools of Engineering, these are located at the Tempe and Polytechnic campuses. Um, just to give you sort of a, a sense of scale and size, um, because they, they are a bit different. When we're talking about Barrett in these campuses, there are about 5,800 students in Barrett on the Tempe campus and about 320 students in Barrett on the Polytechnic campus. So they're a bit different. You know, you've got a lot of options if you're looking for a, a bigger campus feel or a more um, a smaller, more quiet campus, um, you've got those options to explore and we'll be talking about the, the different programs available on, on each campus as well. Um, also the IRA Fulton Schools of Engineering have put together some, some great videos explaining each major individually. And so we'll be sharing that later in the chat for your reference. You can check out that playlist and explore all the different engineering degree programs. And we really believe that when students are in Barrett at ASU, they're getting the best of both worlds. So you have access to all the vast resources of ASU, which is a major public research institution. And then when you're in Barrett, you're getting so many other great things. You have this supportive residential community, you get a lot of personalized attention, and you have a really customizable educational experience where your education is in your hands. And we'll be explaining much more about what that looks like. So as I mentioned, Barrett and engineering are a really great fit. We have about 7,000 students total in Barrett, 
on the four campuses and almost 27% of those students are in engineering. So if you wanna study an engineering program and, and be in the Honors College, you're in good company. There are lots of engineers um, and it's, it's a really great program for engineering majors. Now, just to show you what these programs are on the different campuses, as I mentioned, engineering is at Tempe and Polytechnic. So here is a list of Tempe degree programs in the schools of engineering. Um, you can see there's, there's a lot to choose from. Um, and so I won't, I won't read through all these individually, but um, they're, they're all online for you to explore as well. And then on the Polytechnic campus, this is what we're going to focus on a little bit more today because um, that's the one that, that the three of us who are here today know best. I work there. Uh, Dr. Sugar is the Associate Dean at Polytechnic and Ryan, our student, is, is a student at Polytechnic, so we can focus a little more on these. Um, but again, you know, if you're interested in the Tempe programs, those are all online to explore as well. So here are just a few highlights. We do have aeronautical management technology programs, and this would include our professional flight program. We are located right at an airport, and so it's very convenient for, for students who need to get those flight hours. We also have a simulator building on the Polytechnic campus. So, you know, if you're in flight or air traffic management, you can get those, those real world experiences um, through your, your coursework and, and time outside. Um, also, we have uh, the engineering program. So this is for a Bachelor of Science in Engineering. And you can focus on automotive systems, electrical systems, mechanical engineering systems, or robotics. So a lot of great options for you there. Some unique programs like graphic information technology, human systems engineering, uh, software engineering. And then we do have one program that is a joint program with the School of Business, and that is called Technological Entrepreneurship and Management. So uh, it's, it's a long list. It's a lot for you to explore, but there are great options. And the Polytechnic campus really has a philosophy of learning by doing. So you get a lot of hands-on experience and you're gonna see a lot of project-based courses to, um, to be ready for when you do go on to, to your eventual career. We also have some other resources on the Polytechnic campus that help you get that hands-on experience. So I mentioned the simulator building for, for the different flight programs. There's an engineering design studio. There is a technology center innovation hub with things like 3D printers and other tools for you to explore. Um, so just a lot of great resources for all the engineering students. So let's talk a little bit about the honors curriculum. How does this work if you are studying engineering or, or any other field for that matter? It's the same basic curriculum for, for all students. Um, it's also the same curriculum no matter which ASU campus you're on. And so this applies to anyone who is interested in Barrett. Now, the basic idea is that all students who graduate from ASU need 120 credits to graduate. That doesn't change. If you're in Barrett, it's the same number of credits. So we're not trying to make it difficult. We're not trying to ask for extra work on top of that 120. It's the same 120. So it's totally doable with the program that you're in. The only difference is that you're going to be doing 36 of those credits as honors credits. And there are a lot of different ways that you can do this. And this is why we say that the Barrett Honors Curriculum is so customizable. Um, again, it's, it's your education in your hands and you have a lot of options here. So the first two ways of getting honors credits are common to, to all the students in Barrett. And we call these our bookends. So the first bookend is a course called the Human Event. This is a two semester sequence that Barrett students do in their first year. So it's like a bonding experience for, for all the first year students. And this is a course that's multidisciplinary in nature, could be drawing from literature, religion, science, philosophy, history, art, you're reading different texts, you're discussing them in class. And this is a course designed to help you develop critical thinking skills as well as your writing skills. These are essential skills no matter which field you're in. And especially if you're an engineer, you need really great communication skills. So we think this is a, a really important foundational class. And that's the first way you're going to get those honors credits. The other way that all students in Barrett get some of those honors credits is through an honors thesis or creative project. This is something typically completed in your final year. And a lot of students describe this as a passion project because it can be related to your major or it can be on really any other topic that you'd like to explore. It's a chance to pursue some independent work. You get to work one-on-one -on -one with faculty as a, who's an advisor for you. Um, 
and just do something really fun that you're going to enjoy, get a lot out of. And this is something that also really helps Barrett students stand out when they're looking at graduate schools or different careers. And just to give you a few examples, but again, this is a really wide open field and can, can be any topic you'd like to pursue. But we've had engineering students do an honors thesis looking at the evolution of women in engineering or the security of smart cards hands-on work. We had a student who designed equipment that could be used inside an airplane. So again, this can take on many forms. It's a great way to get honors credits and a great way to, to really set yourself apart as you move forward and beyond college. Okay, so now in between the human event and the honors thesis or creative project, you have a lot of different ways to get those remaining honors credits. You see a little menu of options here and you can pick and choose. You can do everything on this list if you want, or you can choose the ones that work best with your schedule. Um, and so I'll just, I'll just run through these quickly, give you a few examples, you know, but again, it's really customizable. So you could take honors sections of classes. For example, you might be in an honors lab section if you are taking biology or chemistry or physics, you're gonna see smaller class sizes and the professor can focus more on the, the needs of that group. Um, we have a really popular option called honors enrichment contracts. This is something that lets you convert a non-honors class into honors credit. You develop a special project working with your professor for that class. And when you complete that project, you get honors credits for the entire class. Um, a few examples, you could, for example, you could work with a professor if they're doing research, you might get involved in a research project. You could take on a mentorship role in the class and, and lead review sessions for your peers. Or um, we had a student in a calculus class who really wanted to, to study the calculus of roller coasters. And so you can just do a little project to, to apply the course material in a new way. And all of that lets you get honors credits for your courses. You could take special topics courses. These are taught by honors faculty on a wide variety of interesting topics. We had one on the Polytechnic campus that was about statistics and lies. So it wasn't just about the, the mathematical aspects of statistics, but um, also how this information can be used in different contexts. And so it was sort of a, a different kind of spin on the, on the material. Um, but these, these courses are on all different topics. You know, They don't necessarily have to be related to, to your major, but they can be. You can get honors credits for doing internships or research. We do have a dedicated Barrett internship coordinator who helps our students find those opportunities. And then you can also get honors credits for doing study abroad. ESU has a ton of different study abroad programs. And then we also have honors study abroad programs. So you might travel somewhere over spring break or over the summer and you get honors credits for that too. So there are a lot of really wonderful options um, and what's the advantage of all of this then, you know, okay, so you get these, these 36 honors credits, but what, what comes out of this is that you are developing these essential skills, critical thinking skills, writing skills, you are making connections with, with your peers and with faculty, you're showing that you can take the initiative to do these kinds of projects, um, you can take advantage of really unique opportunities in your field, and again, you stand out then when you're looking at graduate schools or employment. So to tell you more about all of this, I'm going to I'm going to stop talking now, and I'm very pleased to introduce Dr. Tom Sugar. Dean Sugar is the associate dean of Barrett on the Polytechnic campus, as well as a robotics professor, and he is going to talk to you more about how Barrett and engineering work so well together. Dean Sugar, thank you, Tara, and thank you to all the students, and thank you to the teachers uh, listening today. Um, I think STEM education is extremely important. And inside of STEM education, of course, I think um, engineering is quite important. So I've been here at ASU for over 20 years, uh, working on the Tempe campus first uh, in mechanical engineering, and then helping to build and grow this ASU Polytechnic campus. At the ASU Polytechnic campus, you'll see that it's a, a, a project-based um, uh, um, ca um, campus where, where we really focus on experiential learning. So a little bit about me. Uh, I worked in industry for about five years in manufacturing. I uh, worked in development of um, waterproof clothing. Then I went back for a PhD in engineering and then I've been teaching for over 20 years at ASU. So uh, let me give you a little bit of background too of some of the things I've been working on. 
We've worked on the next generation robotic ankles. We've worked on jet packs to make people run faster. We've worked on Air Force projects to, um, for cooling suits that you'll see at the top. So you can uh, have a small little refrigerator, pump cool water when you're working outdoors in uh, hot areas. And uh, for the last two years now, I've been the Associate Dean of Barrett Honors College at the Polytechnic campus. And I really do believe that the Barrett Honors College gives you that opportunity, that chance to do extra projects, to, do, to, to find your pathway to really succeed as a scientist or an engineer. So let me talk to you a little bit about the engineering resources at ASU. Um, one thing to think about is that it's a, it's a large uh, state school which has many, many opportunities and then you can use those opportunities to focus on projects of your interest. So we have something called the Fulton Undergraduate um, Research Initiative where students in their third year are paid to work in a, in a research lab and learn and develop uh, projects. So I can give you examples where students have worked on uh, it, it worked in projects in 3D printing. They've worked on projects to build exoskeletons with me. They've worked on uh, projects to do uh, you know different types of uh, manufacturing uh, at, at the nano scale. So then what I like to tell students is that you can use that research experience in your third year to develop an honors thesis. And so your honors thesis would be a, a year long project that you'd work with a faculty member and maybe a couple other students on and developing something uh, that, that you're interested in. So I've had students to, to develop again, exoskeletons. I've had students place um, robotics equipment inside of airplanes. I've had um, students um, uh, to, to help to develop prosthetic ankles. So what I also think then is what's another opportunity is that that would allow you to get into a four plus one engineering program. So here at ASU, we allow students to, to take some classes in their fourth year and have those classes count for their undergraduate degree and their master's degree so that they can earn credits towards that master's degree and really excel and become a, 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 a lifelong learner, developing uh, you know, and achieving uh, high engineering skills. So I really would like to encourage you to think about the four plus one engineering programs at ASU. Some of the labs that we have on the Poly campus, we've got a manufacturing hub with many different types of 3D printing uh, systems. We've got systems that can print carbon fiber with plastic. We've got systems that can print metal. We've got systems that can print different types of plastics at the same time. We've got a, a simulation uh, ASU simulator where students uh, work in aircraft and uh, with a uh, work on uh, becoming a professional flight, a professional pilot. We have um, uh, robotics labs where students can work in soft robotics. They can work on a, autonomous vehicles uh, like um, cars. They can work on UAVs, unmanned aerial vehicles and they can work in wearable robotics that, that I work in. We also have an automotive program on this campus where students can work on an eco car. They're thinking about uh, the next generation electric hybrid cars or the next generation just electric cars. Uh, there's plenty of labs on the Tempe campus as well in industrial engineering and in computer science and material science, but I'm gonna focus a little bit on the labs at the Polytechnic campus. Um, we've had, um, where I think uh, the Barrett College also helps is that we have internship programs. I am helping to just start apprenticeship programs. We want students to be able to get that experiential learning, learning by doing hands-on projects 
I personally have learned best when I have built uh, robotic devices or manufacturing equipment. Um, I personally advise students in exoskeletons and remote mm -hmm. sensing and um, uh, other types of things. Lastly, what do I think is the value of Barrett? The value of Barrett is that you can perform independent research and whether you want to go on to graduate school or you want to excel and get that first uh, great um, you know, job at, uh, at Sandia National Labs. I've actually had students, uh, I had a master's student now who's, uh, who's working at uh, Sandia National uh, Labs. And so I've had students go on to graduate schools like, like UC San Diego, Stanford, or Michigan, or University of Pennsylvania. And I've helped students get that first uh, career. So let me stop there and I'll, uh, I'll move, uh, let um, uh, Ryan talk about you know, his experiences as a student. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Dean Sugar. Okay, so now I'm sharing a slide for you to, to see here that has a lot of different um, student experiences. And I'm gonna have this up in the background while we're, we're talking to one of our current students, um, just to give you a little, little sample of some things that, that go on for the students in Barrett. So I'm very pleased to have Ryan joining us today. And Ryan, I'm going to have you go ahead and introduce yourself. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Ryan. I'm a second year student here on the Polytechnic campus. I'm studying robotics and I'm originally from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Yay, wonderful. <laughs> okay, so um, just a, a few questions. Let's talk, let's go back to the curriculum because I, I showed that little chart of all the different ways you can get honors credits and you have been experiencing this personally. So um, let's talk first about the, the course that we said all Barrett students take called the human event. Um, can you just talk a little bit about your experience with that course and, and how you think it benefits you? Yeah, so I took my human event course for the first two semesters with Dr. Martin. He's in the one in red in the top left there in the slides. Um, and that class, I'm really glad I took it. We went over, uh, we read through the history of ideas pretty much. We started with text from as far back as they go and we read all the way up to the modern day. We looked at how science has evolved through time and how thought has changed. And um, throughout all of that, the goal of the class sort of was to, or part of it was to help us with our writing skills and our critical thinking. And I think that's helped a lot. My critical thinking, um, I think that was the best class I could have taken for it. And my writing in all my classes, even engineering ones has gotten better since I took it. Wonderful. And that's, you know, that's what the, the course is designed to do. And so it's great to hear that it's, it's helpful in your engineering classes as well. Um, we also mentioned the, um, the honors enrichment contracts. And so just to remind everyone watching, again, this is a way to, to get honors credits um, for a non-honors class by developing some kind of special project that you, you do with the faculty member. And so Ryan, I believe you have some experience with honors contracts as well, if you'd like to, to share your experiences? Yeah, so I've done two honors contracts so far, both in engineering classes. The first one I did last semester, um, I did that with Dr. Frank, my engineering professor. Uh, in the class at the time, we were doing um, electronics and microprocessors, like Arduinos. So I went up to him during class. I asked him what I could do for an honors contract. He told me, you can do anything you want as long as it uses an Arduino. And so, because I'm really bad at keeping my plants alive, I decided that I would make a little robot that would water my plants for me. So that was a lot of fun. Um, and then this semester, I'm doing another honors contract with Dr. Bhatti, my uh, materials science professor. And he runs a research lab here on Poly. So he gave me and all the other students in his class who are interested in an honors contract, a choice of um, projects that we could do and I chose one where I get to work on the research he's doing right now on 3D printed metal parts. So I get to work in his lab, which is a really great opportunity. Excellent, thank you. And I guess that leads into my, my next question, um, which would be about the, the resources on the Polytechnic campus for engineers. So you're getting some of that hands-on experience in, in the lab. Um, are there other things you've done to, to get hands-on experiences or 
different resources or, or places that you have used? Yeah, definitely. I think Dr. Sugar mentioned a few of them before, but uh, like in my first year engineering courses in for one of our projects, we built a catapult, like a six foot tall catapult. So that was a lot of fun. But to do that, we used, um, there's a lab here that has lots of wood shop tools. So we got to use that. We got trained on all of them to make sure we didn't hurt ourselves, but we got to use those. And then later on, um, we did some 3D printing. So in the innovation hub, there's a wall full of 3D printers and we can reserve times to use those. And we can use all of these for classes and for personal projects too, which I think is really great. Yes, very cool, thank you. Um, and then if you could maybe just talk a little bit about what it's like to, to be in the Barrett community of scholars as an engineer, um, whether it's you know about relationships that you're able to form with other engineering students or with faculty. Yeah, um, so on Poly, there's like a lot of the students here are engineers, but um, the people, so right now I'm in the Barrett residential community, I'm in the dorms. And right now, all of my roommates are engineers, and a lot of my friends on the floor are also engineers. But most of them I met through Barrett and not through my classes. So it was really great to meet people somewhere else and find out I had something in common with them. Great, thank you. Um, so if students are watching and they're thinking engineering is probably pretty challenging, um, and then we're talking about an honors college, what would you say to, um, to maybe alleviate concerns about, um, about it being challenging or um, you know, even to dispel the myth that it's a lot of extra work? What, what could you say to address that? So like Tara was saying before, um, your classes like the human event don't, aren't extra classes. They replace other classes you would have taken normally. It's like the human event that replaced a humanities class. So I didn't have any additional credits my first year um, that I didn't choose. And the honors contracts, like getting to build a robot that waters my plants, I, I don't see that as extra work. That's just a fun project that I get to do. So as long as you, like for your honors contracts, as long as you do them with professors you like, or if you take special topic classes that look interesting to you, then it doesn't feel like extra work. It just feels like you're getting something, like you get more out of it than you um, would otherwise. Excellent. Yeah. And I think that's why the, the honors contracts are such a popular way to get those honors credits because um, can, students can design fun projects that they might want to do on their own time anyway. And so, you know, that, that's the goal that, that it doesn't feel like extra work, but it's still something that is helping you get more out of the class and work with the professor and, and then get the honors credits all at the same time. So that's great. Um, and what would you say that you have enjoyed the most about being in Barrett so far? Definitely the community. I think getting to live with so many people who are like-minded, but who are still in different majors and have different interests, I think that's really great. It's just great to have such a strong community here. Great, thank you so much, Ryan. Um, okay, so if we have time at the end for some questions, if you do have specific questions for, for a student, um, Ryan will be here to, um, to jump back on if you have any questions for him. Um, so let's move forward. Just got a few more things to, to cover here. Um, if you are interested in applying to Barrett, let's just quickly touch on this process. So the first step is really just to apply to ASU. Once you've applied to ASU, you're going to get an ID that will let you log into the online system. And that's what you will need to, to then apply to Barrett. And if you're looking for an application, it's available through our website. I have that listed here. The website is barretthonors.asu.edu, which is a, a great site to explore for a lot of information. Um, and then if you go to the admissions section, that's where you can find everything you need there. We do have a holistic review process. So often people will ask, you know, is there a cutoff GPA to, to apply? And there's no cutoff. You know, we, we're willing to consider all complete applications. Um, and so it, we're, we're looking for the big picture. You know, we wanna know who you are. There are different components that, that give us a sense of why you're interested in the Honors College and you know, how you've done both in school and, and in other activities. And so that's what we're looking for. It's also free to apply to Barrett and we have non-binding admissions. So you're not locked in to, to anything. You know, you've, you've got time to, to make a decision. 
And um, I'll show you our deadlines in the next slide, but we do encourage everyone to, to apply as early as possible. So what are we looking for? We ask for two letters of recommendation. At least one should be from a teacher. The other one certainly can be, um, or it can be from like a, a coach or a supervisor, someone who knows you well. Um, they just can't be from friends or family. There is a, an essay and you've got a choice of a few topics. These are pretty open-ended. So, you know, it's going to, to let your own voice come through um, and give you, give you a chance to, to tell us more about who you are. There's a section called Beyond the Classroom where you can list and describe up to, to 10 different things that you've done outside of your courses. So it could be um, different activities, music, sports, um, hobbies, service work, leadership roles, anything you'd like to tell us about. It could be awards that you've won. Um, and you get a chance to, to tell us why they are important to you. We look for an unofficial transcript. And then there are a couple optional components. You could submit a creative supplement if you have something you'd like to, to share with us there. And then there's a short optional reflection. Um, the one this year is simply reflect on the past year. So it's been a very eventful year to say the least. And um, if there's something that you would like to, to share in your reflections about the past year, no, no matter what topic it is, um, you know, that's the space for you to do so, but it really is optional. And so if you, if you don't feel like you have something to, to say about that, that's fine too, um, you know, but it's, it's there if you need it. And then the big thing for this year is that for 2021 admissions, we're not using ACT or SAT scores. So for seniors this year who would be applying to ASU for 2021, that would apply to you no test scores. Um, if you are uh, in your junior year and you're thinking about ASU, keep an eye on the news. Um, this, this policy could change. You know, we're going to revisit it this year um, when we see how this has all gone and, and what next year looks like. Um, but, but we do know, you know that for anyone applying for 2021, those test scores are, are not being used. Okay, so the deadlines. Um, as I mentioned, the first step is just to apply to ASU and then you can apply to Barrett. So here are the Barrett deadlines. Our next one is January 15th. And again, we really encourage everyone to apply by this one. Why? Um, I've got a few good reasons listed here. First, you're going to see the, the highest admission rates for Barrett. Also, if you apply by this January deadline, you can apply for Barrett scholarships, um, which is obviously a really big plus. Um, we do get the question a lot, you know, does your tuition change if you're in Barrett? And your tuition does not change, but all ASU academic colleges do have a college fee. So for Barrett, that fee is a thousand a semester. Um, so if you're applying for scholarships and, and getting that money, that money is coming right back to you. Um, you know, we think that the fee is important. It goes into providing so many different wonderful opportunities for honors students. Um, but also, you know, why not apply for scholarships? Why not? Uh, why not get some money back? Um, Barrett also has, you know, in addition to the scholarships, we have lots of different funding opportunities. So for working on the thesis or travel or summer programs or going to academic conferences, you can apply for funding. So there's a lot of support available, but, but to get that support, you've got to apply for it. So make sure you apply to Barrett by January 15th. And then you can also apply for our scholarships, which are all posted on our website. And so that is the information that we wanted to share with you today. Um, Barrett the Honors College provides so many opportunities for, for engineering students as we've been describing. And we really think that if you are challenging yourself to pursue these kinds of projects, um, to get to know your professors, to, to do this fun work, you're really making a big investment in your future. And the payoff of that investment is that you're developing these skills you are forming really essential connections with your peers, with your professors, and then you have access to so many unique opportunities um, that are really going to, to help you throughout college and beyond. So that's a lot of information. You know, you might have some questions now and, and very shortly we'll start taking those questions, um, but you do have my contact information here. You've got my email if you'd like to reach out afterwards. Also through our website, we have a contact us form and you can go there and direct your questions to, to a specific campus if you like. Um, so, you know, if, if you think of something after this presentation and would like to, to reach out and get in touch and ask us questions, please, please feel free to do so. We love to talk to, to people about the Honors College and hope that you'll reach out if you are interested in applying. Um, but also just explore our website. You know, there's a lot of great information there. And so that's another, another good thing to check out. 
So that wraps up our presentation. I am going to um, share some information for you in the chat that I mentioned. So I'm gonna take just a second to, um, I'm gonna stop my screen sharing and, and get all that information posted so that we can share it with you. And then, um, and then we'll go ahead and open things up to questions. So thank you so much for joining us today and I'll get that information posted. And then we look forward to, to seeing if you have any questions for us. Great, thank you so much, Tara. Did you want me to share that, uh, that info inside our YouTube chat? Because I definitely can if you'd like. Sure, that'd be great. Okay. So let me, okay, I'm gonna post it here in Zoom and then I'll just explain what these links are. So we've got one story there. Um, it's a, a story on our website about an engineering student and also a Barrett alum and how he was able to, to benefit from all these experiences. So we think you'll find that interesting. There are some virtual resources on our website. So lots of links to, to things that can provide you with more information. And then earlier, as I mentioned, the, um, the schools of engineering at ASU have a YouTube playlist with a lot of a lot of different videos explaining all the different degree programs. And so that list is there as well. Okay, great. Yeah, we'll make sure to, uh, to get all of that here inside of our chat. Uh, just a moment here, make sure that all ends up in the right place. Um, and we did get some questions uh, coming in and some questions that were sent to me. Great. Let's see here. Okay, so the alumni story is just there um, on the chat for anyone who's interested. The virtual resources, it looks like it's going out now. Um, awesome. Okay, virtual resources is up. And then finally, the engineering degree programs. And of course, just to back up what Tara was saying there, um, we did share her contact information inside of the, um, the YouTube chat. So please reach out, teachers, share that with your students. Um, I know that I see that the link as well to the um, uh, to the barretthonors.asu.edu slash admissions is up there as well. So teachers, again, we're relying on you to pass it on to your students. If you think you have any students in your classroom might be a good fit for this, please pass it info along. Uh, so Tara, I think I'm gonna jump right into the questions. I'm gonna kind of read through them uh, in the order that they came in during the presentation. So um, the first question is asking, is Barrett only for engineering? Great question. No, we are open to students in every major. So um, that's hopefully the that curriculum description gave you a sense of how it works with your degree. You know, you can you can take that little pie and and choose the elements that work the best with any classes that you're taking. So you know, if you're studying business or different languages or math, anything, um, you know, is any major. And ASU has hundreds of majors. So there are lots, lots of different options for you. Um, and again, those honors contracts where you can work with professors, design special projects, um, you know, again, that works with any kind of class. So if you're in a film studies class, you might watch all the movies of a certain director and do a presentation for your class and that's your project and you get honors credit. So, um, so any kind of class, any major, we, we're open to everyone. Awesome. Uh, uh, this is, uh... Dr. Sugar, I can also add that a student asked me once, am I getting a degree from Barrett or am I getting a degree in engineering? And you're getting a degree in engineering with a Barrett Honors um, certificate in your diploma. So we are an umbrella college on top of the other colleges. I think that's way, the way to think of it. I see, okay, okay. I, I think that makes a lot of sense. Thank you so much. And um, what study abroad options are there when students asking? So um, <laughs> probably anywhere you are interested in going. Um, if you're looking at the ASU options, it, it's really all over the world. Um, but one thing, so I'll give you an example of something you can do specifically through Barrett. We do have trips that, that go all over. One really popular study abroad trip goes to, um, I believe, Germany and Switzerland. And it's sort of following the, the traces of Frankenstein. So, so sometimes you'll, you know, you'll read things in a course and then you'll go to the country and explore what the, the books we're talking about. So that's a really fun thing. Um, but one program that is really is special and unique to Barrett is something called Global Resolve. 
And, um, and actually, if you read that alumni story, it's mentioned a little bit in there. So this is a program where students first take a course and work in partnership with a community somewhere in the world, and then can travel to that place then to, to help implement solutions to, to different problems that the community is facing. So we've had students travel to Indonesia and Kenya and Mexico, working in partnership with different communities, um, implementing different kinds of solutions. And so it's, it's both a course, but then it's a travel opportunity. And so it's a really unique program that, that Barrett offers. Um, so that's something you can read about in the, in the alumni story. Um, but, but really, if there's a program that you'd wanna do somewhere in the world, you can probably find it through ASU. That is so, so, so cool. And I love it because you're in there and you're actually solving problems, right? You're actually finding solutions to a lot of, a lot of real world problems that people are having in other countries. I think that's exactly. really, really, really awesome. Um, it's a good question right now for the current situation we find ourselves in. So is, um, is Barrett, is Arizona State University uh, online right now? So um, this fall, we have, we have actually been able to deliver in-person courses um, it's been a mix and students have been able to, to do what works best for them and what they've been most comfortable with. So in-person courses are available. You know, we go into the classroom, we've got students in there spaced out, wearing masks with lots of disinfectant. Um, so if students wanna be in the classroom, that experience has been available to them. Um, if students you know, need to be online for, for health reasons or are more comfortable doing so, um, they can also join the class online. We have something going on called ASU Sync. So it's a, it's a hybrid option. You know, we've got the classroom experience and the online experience simultaneously. Um, and so it's, it's working in whatever form students need to be using right now, which has been really great. Um, so it's, you know, it takes a little, a little more planning and, and thinking about how we're all spaced out and being safe, but, um, but students are on campus, you know, and so um, even events, we've got events going on, um, not quite the same as before for students to, to hang out together. You know, we've got masks and space being spaced out. You know, the, the nice thing with the, the good Arizona weather is that we can do a lot outside. Yeah. Um, so that's helpful. But students can also do things through Zoom. Um, so it's, it's a mix of things going on. But the other, the other great thing here is that with Barrett being on all four campuses, um, with having a lot of online experiences, students can, can take advantage of that really easily and don't even have to travel to the other campuses to do so. Um, you know, we have a shuttle system that, that moves between the four campuses and makes it easy to get around. But, um, but also we have Zoom now. So, um, so it's almost easier to, to access some of these events um, to, to meet and connect with students from the other campuses as well. Yeah, I was just gonna highlight that both Tara and I have been teaching ASU Sync. So I have students in my classroom, plus we are broadcasting my class. And so the students uh, get my electronic notes that I write on an electronic board. They get a, a Zoom video and um, they're, they're, we're really enjoying it. I mean, it's, 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 the, it's a combination of technology and resources and, and ASU has made it work. We've kept open the entire semester. That's very cool. I mean, it sounds uh, more dynamic than probably what most students are used to in their virtual online learning spaces. So I think that's cool. And then also, I mean, there's just so many neat things uh, that I can just say about this, including the shuttle. I know I visited um, the ASU downtown campus uh, several years ago. And so it's, I mean, there, there's just so much neat stuff. Um, and one student is wondering if that 120 credit hours that we were speaking about um, to accomplish the degree, if that can be done or if it's normally done in four years. That is, um, that's the four year plan. And um, I mean, we even have students in Barrett who, who can graduate a little early because they come in with like a lot of AP credits or IB or dual enrollment credits. So um, four years is, is the standard plan and that's the 120 credit program. Um, but, you know, depending on credits you may come in with or, you know, as, as Dr. Sugar was explaining, there's the four plus one program. If you even wanna get a head start on graduate work, that's a really nice option too. But, but the basic degree program is, is a four year plan. Mm -hmm. And if a student begins um, like a program in high school, like as a dual credit program or anything like that, will that transfer over? It, um, so those 
can count towards your degree program. Um, they won't count um, because sometimes students will say, well, if I, if I took this course in high school, can I get honors credits for that? So the honors credits do have to come only from things you're doing at ASU. Um, you know, we, we won't say, oh, you can, you can eliminate some of those honors credits. Um, you, still do, you still do the 36 honors credits at ASU, but if you've done certain things in high school, it might, it might apply to other aspects of your degree program. Yeah, and the advisors, the advisors here are really great and can, can tell you all about that when you're registering for, for classes and trying to figure out how your credits all work too. You would have to work with your advisor in your, in your home school and transfer some of those credits over. And so a lot of students do do that. And then that's where uh, Tara was explaining that students might graduate a little bit early because they came in with 20 credits or something already done. And then, and then we encourage a lot of those students to do the four plus one programs that we have. Great, great, okay. And um, let's see here, I'm sorting through some other, <laughs> some other questions we had coming in. Um, uh, this is kind of a funny one. And this one, I, Dr. Sugar, I'm glad you're, you're on. Uh, they're asking, what, is, what are robotic ankles? <laughs> <laughs> sure, so um, I was working with the uh, military amputee research program with Walter Reed Army Hospital. And we designed a, um, a robotic uh, prosthetic, so a bionic foot. And so we designed a motorized foot that could allow someone to walk and run and jump. And so there, there's quite a few interesting videos out there. Which, which is amazing, yeah. right? I mean, and this is the beauty of, I think, engineering and STEM uh, as a whole is that you're solving these incredible life-changing solutions uh, for people who otherwise, in this case, might not be able to walk, right? I, right? I think that's just absolutely amazing. So, yes, we were trying, and also the way it is a lot of those were really professional type athletes that wanted to give. It wasn't that they just wanted to maybe walk with crutches or be in a wheelchair. They wanted to get back and walk with an active lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So that's why we were building powered systems. And this is a this is a great question, kind of based, I think, on that idea. So do engineers normally manufacture these items as well? So there's a lot of different types of programs. So uh, we actually, we, on this campus, we actually do build a lot of things, but you can think about, you could, you could major in manufacturing engineering and think about uh, the regular uh, CNC and, 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 and milling machines and things like that, or the new additive manufacturing that we're studying here at ASU. Or you could think about electrical systems where you're designing the microprocessor boards that go into these types of systems, sensors. Or lastly, you could think about robotics where you're trying to put software, microprocessors, mechanical design all together. So, so I think these are the really the unique things that, you know, now as young students, we have, we have this ability to, to develop, you know, fantastic things with New, new sensors, new microprocessors, new programming, because the cell phone that you guys have in your hands are 10 times better than the computers that I had in 1987, right? I mean, it, it's just remarkable difference at this point. So it sounds like in a certain way, uh, there's, almost a cert there's almost an engineering type for anybody's specific interest, right? So at ASU, I think Tara showed you, we just have such a a wealth of different type of engineering disciplines uh, that it, it, it's just because we are a large school, we can have that, but then Barrett gives you this ability to work with a small community of scholars into, you know, uh, into projects that you want to be, be on. So I'll give you one last shout out. We have something called um, the um, Desert Wave, which is an all female engineering group working with Barrett and they built underwater robots and got third in the world last year. Wow. And I think it was second in the world this year, something like that. So, That's and, very, uh, very, very cool. Yep. Um, and so we have time, I think, to, just for a couple more questions. I'm sorry, I know we're running a little bit over there, teachers. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll cap it at three more questions. Um, so first of which, does Barrett have any honors, fraternities or sororities? Um, not specifically through, through Barrett, um, you know, there are, there are a lot of student organizations in Barrett. So, um, depending on your interests, you know, I think, uh, 
there's even a, a Barrett choir or something like that. <laughs> so there, you know, a lot of different things, but like service groups or leadership groups. Um, so different student organizations, but not specifically fraternities and sororities through Barrett. Okay. And uh, you were talking a little bit about a creative supplement. So this question is kind of asking you uh, just to expand on that. What is a creative supplement? Sure. Um, so, you know, if you if you are an artist, I think the, the answer is easy. You know, if you have artwork that you want to submit to us, um, there the application does have instructions for the, the different kinds of, of files, I think, or, you know, just um, the important thing is really to, to put it in some context. You know, why are you sharing this with us? What why is this important to you? You know, tell us about your art or things you produce. Um, but if you're not, say you're not a visual artist, you're not submitting sketches or paintings or anything like that, um, you might be creative in other ways. You know, maybe you design cars um, or, or car exteriors, something like that, you know, and you wanna show us things you've done. Um, there are a lot of different ways we think for you to be creative. And so it's a pretty open section of the application. Um, you know, maybe you're a poet and you want to share your poetry with us. Um, whatever it is that, that you want to submit there, you know, I'd say the important things are just follow the directions about how, how we're asking you to, to submit it um, and make sure you explain why it is meaningful, why you think this is something that, that you would like to share with us and that tells us more about who you are. So it's a pretty open-ended section. Um, you know, and if you if you do have particular questions about what you'd like to submit, you can reach out to us. But but you know, it's it's there for you to to showcase things that make you unique. That's very cool. That doesn't seem like it's a normal thing on college applications. I think that sounds pretty neat, honestly. Um, and you were talking about the scholarships as well, the different scholarship opportunities uh, through Barrett. So this student is wondering, um, will Barrett help me apply for these scholarships? Um. So. I think what makes it fairly easy to apply is that um, it's through one system. So you might find different Barrett scholarships that um, that are applicable to you, you know, and once you've entered information, um, my understanding of how this works is, I think it's a new system this year, so I'm not 100% certain of, of what it looks like, but um, but I think that that information will sort of populate throughout the system for, for multiple scholarships that you're applying for. Um, those are listed on our website. And as I mentioned, you wanna make sure you apply to Barrett by January 15th. And then that scholarship deadline is February 1st. So I'll just a little bit after the, the application deadline. So make sure you get a head start. Um, you know, also we strongly encourage students to both submit their FAFSA to ASU and to look at the ASU scholarship portal. You know, it doesn't hurt to look for as many scholarships as you can find. So make sure you're checking all of the resources. Um, I th there might be one Barrett scholarship even available through the, the ASU scholarship portal, um, I think for national scholars. So just look everywhere, you know, both ASU and Barrett, make sure you're, you're finding anything that applies to you and um, you know, it never hurts to, to try to get the money. Yeah, yeah. And there's, there really is so many amazing options out there. You know, uh, there's grants where that's just free money. People are like, here, just take this money. Don't have to pay it back. And of course, student loans and things like that as well that are, that are all offered and all are resources there to help you, the student, succeed and, and get through college successfully. So I think that's really, really, really cool. Um, that's all the time that we have for today. Um, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sugar. Thank you so much, Tara, for coming on. Thank you so much, Ryan, for coming on and, and uh, giving us uh, an example of a student from Albuquerque who's out there <laughs> enjoying the beautiful weather out in Arizona. Uh, I'm sure it's been a little bit warmer there than it has been over here these past few weeks. Uh, so again, uh, thank you all so much for coming on. Uh, stay healthy and safe. And we're going to welcome, uh, let's see here, I'm going to pull up my schedule quick. I know that we're uh, bringing ASU back on two more times throughout this Discovery Festival. So if you want to come back on and bring your class back on uh, to see some more information about what ASU has to offer, uh, please stop back in. Let's see here on... Uh, tomorrow. So you guys are coming back on tomorrow morning at 930. So teachers, keep an eye out for that. Bring your students back with questions. Um, if your question wasn't answered today, bring them back tomorrow morning at 930. And then uh, it looks like we have uh, Arizona State uh, University coming back on on our last day of Discovery Festival. That's pretty amazing. You guys are our last demonstration for the whole festival on the 24th at 1 p.m. We're bringing on the um, Ira A. Fulton Schools of Engineering to talk about what they do. So please come back for that teachers and students. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you very much.
All right. Take care. Stay, stay Bye -bye. safe. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thank you, and, everyone. Uh, thank you. And I do want to give a final shout out here as we wrap up to all of our wonderful sponsors uh, for this virtual discovery festival. Of course, to Honeywell, uh, who is our presenting sponsor for this whole festival, what you're seeing would not be possible without Honeywell. Thank you, Honeywell. Um, and of course, you can check out their presentation if you missed it, or even this presentation, if there's something you want to hear again or anything like that, or get some of that contact information. Uh, this video will be available as a recording on our YouTube. So please take a look at this, take a look at Honeywell's presentation, uh, and uh, yeah, big shout out to Fidelity Investments, our curious sponsor for this event. Thank you so much, Fidelity. To Aztec Machine Repair, to Air Force Research Laboratories, the Defense Threat Reduction Agency, to Kirtland Air Force Base, uh, to Micronet Solutions, Sandia National Laboratories, and to all of our heroes at Presbyterian Hospitals. Thank you so much. All right, everyone. We will see you tomorrow morning at 9.30 a.m. Stay healthy. Stay safe and we will see you then.